Well, uh, hello everyone. Thank you for attending this presentation. My name is Arnaud and uh, right now I'm a senior software engineer at Collabora. So I'm mostly a software guy doing low-level development uh, regarding kernel, drivers, bootloaders and all the base system stuff uh, and mostly in embedded software fields. Uh, prior to that, uh, I used to be uh, a couple years ago the owner and only person actually at uh, Hawaii Amplification, which was uh, my small company. I was designing and building custom tube amplifiers for guitar and bass guitar. This was actually my first real world experience with uh, electronics design. And that's why I got uh, interested in the first place in the EDA tools and all the free software tools about that. So I will guide you from the going from the ID to the prototype using free and open source software and just fixing some neat little thing here. Sorry about that. Uh, okay. Um, there, should be better. Sorry. Uh, so going from the ID to the prototype, uh, so I'll walk you through a sample workflow, which is actually my workflow for designing new electronics device. And uh, I'll show you along the way a few software I uh, use or intend to use or just heard about, which are all free software, of course. So first is testing and validating your idea, getting sure everything will work and should work. Then you have the PCB design itself, and finally, you can build a case for your project using mechanical CAD tools. So for the first part, uh, the first questions you have to ask yourself when you have a new idea, might be innovative or just a new take on an old uh, classical circuit, is can it work? There, you're uh, a bit on your own. It's about theory and electronics understanding and uh, the basic rules. So you have first uh, first idea. If it can work in theory, the thing is, will it work with how you intend to implement it? And in that case, uh, you have of course the calculation you can do, but you have also the simulation tools, which are really important. And I guess there are two main simulation tools available in free software too. There are QX which is a cute one and uh, based on, uh, I don't remember the engine name exactly, but it's not Spice. And you have NG Spice, which uses the classical Spice tool for simulation. The, I don't really have any experience with any of them because I'm not really uh, using most, uh, more simulation. But the thing I can see here is that NG Spice will allow you to use one of the many models of Spice devices you can find on the internet. In case you need to use some kind of exotic component, in my case it was uh, electron tubes, which are not really widely used uh, among the electronics community right now. You have tube models for Spice, but you don't have one for QX, I guess. Then you can draft your schematic. So, of course, you can use a full feature DDA, but you also have the good old paper stuff. Generally, when you start a project, you only draft your schematic on a piece of paper and it will be awful, but it will help be a, a fast way of getting, of putting your ID into something a bit concrete. And there's also a small software that I really like, it's JSKIM. It's really aimed more at uh, analog design, and most importantly to me, it includes uh, an electron tubes library. <laughs> it is a small multi-format, uh, multi-platform, sorry, software. It's written in Java, so it's, uh, it can run on Windows, Mac OS, Linux, uh, any BSD you want. Uh, and uh, it's, of course, open source software, and it really is appropriate for drafting quickly a schematic without asking yourself too much question about the uh, design rules or the net names or anything like that. Once you have your 
theoretical idea validated, or at least you think you, this can work, you have to make a proof of concept. Basically, I like to talk about having a functional proof of concept, that is talking a, taking a small piece from your final circuit to check if it will actually work. It might be, for example, uh, reading an analog voltage in a specific way, and this you can do with off-the-shelf modules most of the time. You have uh, modules for Adafruit, SparkFun, Set Studio, and so on. You can use a breadboard or a prototype shield. Just things that are for an ephemeral circuit design. Once you have your proof of concept validated and you sure at that point that every block from your circuit is going to work as, it, as you expect it to, you have to select your components. Uh, my advice on that is that you uh, rather use widely available components, not something from an obscure vendor uh, located in, you can find only on one or two websites and you don't really know about the uh, future of the availability of these components. Uh, they must have available, comprehensive, and correct data sheets. That is paramount. Uh, you have to really un be able to, to know how the component will work depending on what are your inputs and the circuit around it. So the data sheets are really something that is fundamental when you select your components. Of course, it has have sufficient performances. And a small one that is rather uh, really personal, but I really prefer through-hole mounting components. Uh, don't forget that I mostly work with electron tubes, which, has bi which are big devices, and all the components surrounding the tubes are high voltage capacitors and uh, power resistors. So I really, I'm used to working only with rather big components. Of course, if you're using a microcontroller in a TQFP package, you won't be able to do that. But for someone who has not real experience in soldering, starting with through all components is really mm, easier, way easier. So then you have the, what I call the proto prototype. It's kind of a general proof of concept. You put all the bits and pieces together, and then you check whether you can make your whole circuit work. It's used to validate the global hardware design and how every piece will interact with each other. You have to make lo generally lots of trial and error, so pick a modification-friendly platform. I mostly use uh, Vero boards as they allow me to switch the, the connections and uh, easily solder and unsolder any, many components. But again, I'm working with room hole uh, mounted components. And it's really not a prototype yet. Here you have an example of one, th one of my pro prototypes. It was a tube uh, curve tracer, actually, with, uh, you can see the Arduino for the digital part and all the analog circuits on the right. Of course, it's something quite ugly. It's fragile and maybe dangerous because uh, I'm using here voltage around uh, 250 volts. But this, th you get the idea. It's something you don't intend to show off, but uh, it helps you really advance in your hardware design and fix a few, uh, most of your, the problems you will have in the future. In that case, it was using the right uh, operational amplifiers because I had really had to use JFET input amplifiers and uh, most of the time, due to offset, uh, offset uh, problems. I didn't get the, the right results, so it really helped me select the right component for my final project. Once you get to the point where your hardware design is validated, you can finally design the PCB itself. So for the most, for a long time, you only have to, you were only able to use proprietary software for real world projects. You had already open source software, but 
in my opinion, most of the time you couldn't use it for uh, to build a project from the ground up and get to the manufacturing. I'm talking uh, mid uh, mid 2000s uh, right now. Right now we had, in my opinion, two big free and uh, open source software suits, uh, which are KCAD, of course, or KICAD. Sorry, I'm uh, pronouncing it out of French, uh, and Fritzing. I'll start off with Fritzing. It's really a nice piece of software. It's the most recent one actually started. Uh, um, the first version was released in 2008, uh, so a bit less than uh, a bit more than 10 years. It has a maker approach. It's really maker oriented, in my opinion. You have some graphical views and uh, a really eye candy interface uh, for someone who's not used to the EDA uh, software in general. And it gives him so, lots of advantages. First off, being having the fully uh, fully integrated stack. In, in fact, uh, you have uh, the schematics design, the PCB routing, and even an Arduino IDE inside the same software. So you can do all your building and coding if you use an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi microcontroller or so inside the same software. So that's to me a big advantage for uh, people who want to create a first project or at least are not really used with the whole development process of a uh, connected or intelligent device. <coughs> it has a really user-friendly interface. As you can see here, this is really easy to visualize what you're doing and how you're doing it. There are multiple design modes too. Here you can see the breadboard mode and the schematics capture mode. And you can switch from one to the other and every connection you, you make on the breadboard mode will be uh, transferred to the schematic mode and so on. And most of the modules available on the market and the microcontrollers such as the Arduino, Raspberry Pi, even the Galileo and a few other ones are available in the default library of the software. So when you're using off-the-shelf modules and uh, development board uh, like these ones, this is really a big time saver. Uh, but of course, has a few drawbacks, uh, at least in my opinion. It's, the library is quite limited uh, only to popular and uh, most available components and modules. For instance, it doesn't have any electron tube related components in the default library. So uh, that's really something that I, for myself, can, cannot use. New model creation is quite difficult because it has the, as the things are really all nice looking and really nicely integrated, you have to put more effort into creating a new component for Fritzing with having a nicely drawn uh, component, uh, component footprint and images than you will do with the traditional EDA software. So it's not something that you can't overcome, of course, but it requires a bit more time and a bit more involvement. The auto rotor for the PCB stuff is quite poor, I have to say. Uh, I've only tried it uh, really quick, so uh, maybe I'm wrong, uh, maybe some of you will disagree, but from my experience, the auto router is really, uh, well, quite uh, almost unusable and uh, not on par with what you could expect uh, of a professional EDA package. And finally, it's quite difficult to use for complex or exotic projects. By exotic, I mean some projects using electron tubes, mostly. But I'm sure uh, some other people would have different, uh, different use cases. And maybe uh, going through with an FPGA on a TQFP144 package will prove to be uh, a bit more difficult but using freezing. But then again, if you 
getting to using uh, this kind of packages, maybe you're not the target audience of fridging. So you might rather use CACAD. This is the Elder. It started in 1992, so a really old piece of software, even by today's standards. And it's the most widely used uh, right now in the industry regarding open source CDAs. I seen Olimex is an obvious uh, big user of CACAD. And Purism, which is designing currently a, a smartphone running, uh, running Linux, has designed their dev kits, the dev boards for the smartphone using CACAD. And they intend to make it public and open source, so I hope uh, they will deliver up to it. But that's also a big, uh, big industry user of CACAD. Uh, CACAD is not as integrated as Freezing. You have two big software which are quite independent. You have eSchema and PCB New. The first one, of course, is for schematics capture, and uh, PCB New is the PCB router. It includes also a lot of useful tools, uh, such as a PCB calculator with a lot of functionalities. For instance, this uh, allows you to calculate the heat elevation of a track depending on uh, its width and the current and its length and the current drone and uh, passing through this track and other really useful stuff that are a great help in the design stage. And it has, to me, some big advantages over every other open source uh, EDA package. First, it is very actively developed. And uh, I have to say the CERN, which is the European Center for uh, Nuclear Research, is devoting a few people working full time on KiCad. And uh, I first started using the software, or at least I tried to use it, before their uh, contributions, I believe it was version 3. And starting with version 4 and uh, the CERN contributions, we really had the software which make a great leap forward in terms of usability and features. And uh, they really did an amazing job uh, on that. Uh, and it keeps getting better, so that's, uh, that's something uh, that's wonderful. The library. By default, it's quite comprehensive, and it even includes a valve, uh, well, electron tube symbols and footprints. Uh, you have also a lot of uh, third-party libraries, as it is quite an old software. You have lots of people who have used it over the years, and you can find virtually any, uh, any component. If not in the default library, you will be able mostly to you find it in a third party library. It has advanced routing abilities like the push and shove router, the routing of differential pairs with uh, having the same length for every tracker. And it integrates a simulation engine based on Spice and 3D preview. Of course, everything's not perfect, mostly the interface is not really user-friendly for a first-time user. You have to understand the way KiCad works and how every software integrates with the other. And uh, regarding the use of the mouse wheel and keyboard shortcuts, uh, it's not really something uh, intuitive at first sight. The user interface, so I know that's something that's been worked on right now, but between the schematic editor and the PCB designer, you have really some inconsistencies in terms of user interface and user interaction. So that can be difficult at, the, at first when using KiCad. And that's, I guess, being worked to uh, also, but the two software don't communicate enough you don't have for now, uh, when you change a connection in the schematic editor, it's not automatically pulled back in the PCB design. You have to go through the netlist export and import from the PCB new in order to make it to have the change available in the PCB editor. So my advice is that you better use Fritzing if you had no prior experience with EDA software and electronics design. 
And then when you get comfortable enough with it and uh, need more features and more advanced capabilities, go on to KiCad. Then you have to manufacture your PCB. You can do it at home, but it needs specific equipment uh, and you need also some space. It requires using some toxic products, so it might be dangerous. And it's also quite difficult, at least when you start, for double-sided boards or when you get thin tracks and really little spacing between tracks. It's quite difficult to have a clean result. So my advice is rather to go through professional manufacturing. You have lots of, uh, of it now. It's really cheap for small PCBs. You can have a five by, th five by 10 centimeters PCBs. Uh, it would cost something like 20 euros for 10 pieces, including the shipping costs. The drawback is that you have to order generally five to 10 PCBs minimum. And there are lots of manufacturers to choose from. You have a PC, uh, website which is PCB Shopper, which is really nice and compares the prices and delays of every manufacturer, or I think there are every manufacturer, uh, given the size and the few technical uh, requirements for your PCBs. Other useful software, which are Horizon, which uh, has been presented just before. Actually, I didn't know it uh, before I looked at the schedule for this room uh, at Fosden, so I really give it a try. And uh, it's more modern EDA. It uses SkyCAD's router, so I guess the, you can definitely do something with it. You also have GEDA, which is an old project, but seems to be lagging behind SkyCAD for, uh, for quite some time. And something that I found a bit fun is uh, Visolate. It's an old project, it's no longer maintained, but it allows you to generate G-code for building a PCB from a milling machine. So that's another take on uh, PCB uh, manufacturing, which you can do in your local fab lab. And I think it was interesting to mention. Then I get real quick through the next slides because I'm really light, sorry. So for designing a case, you have some mechanical CAD software available. The first one being LibreCAD. It's some kind of uh, digital drawing board, 2D only, like you may have heard of AutoCAD in the 90s. It's really the free software equivalent right now. Quite useful, actually, for doing laser cut, uh, like uh, this case, for example. It will uh, be drawn nicely on uh, LibreCAD, but of course, uh, you can't uh, do anything which will be truly printed with it. Then you have OpenSCAD. This is mostly, uh, I think, the of it are the software developers, mechanical CAD, where you code your shape and have only a 3D preview, but you can't interact with. And finally, there is FreeCAD which is a more traditional approach and has a parametric 3D modeling. The user interface uh, is more close to the industry standards and it has a cl classical workflow, which is you design a sketch in 2D and then through extrusion or rotation, get a shape from it. And that's all for me. I don't know, maybe we have time for one question, but I guess we're running really late, so sorry about that. Uh, the question was, did I try the free, freely distributed uh, commercial software? So proprietary software, but not paying for it, such as Eagle. I've tried it back in 2005, I guess. But uh, since then, I'm a long time so free software advocate. So I, uh, well, when I uh, found, uh, I was looking for a new EDS software uh, five or six years ago, I obviously wanted only free software. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
<laughs> actually, actually, my friends switched to Kai Cat from Eagle. Well, well, they have, they have small commercial pump that they can pay for it. So, and they still switch to Kai Cat because they become better. Mm -hmm. right. Any other questions? Okay, let's thank Arnaud again. Thank you.